Okay, so um, in this uh, tutorial, I'm going to show you how to stitch uh, rendered images together uh, using the video sequencer. So um, in most rendering applications, the workflow is uh, to create um, high resolution stills um, that you can uh, use um, to compress in multiple video formats or, you know, use it in a multitude of ways. And uh, the, the stills themselves just be, provide a, um, a an archival way to kind of store uh, images. When you're rendering out um, to to um, still images, um, first maybe I'll just show you how to do that. Um, and then we'll kind of talk about, I'll be able to kind of narrate why I'm doing this as, as we move through. Don't make things complicated. I'm just going to put in a couple of keyframes here and we're just going to run, run out like a, I'll just show you the workflow. So I'm going to hit I and I'm going to hit uh, key the location. I'm going to move to like frame 60 and then I'm going to move the sphere over here and hit I and keyframe the location. And now um, the sphere will move between those two points. I'm going to grab my camera. Right now it's um, this camera is set up for a panoramic image. So I'm actually going to um, add a new camera. Uh, so I can just kind of get the defaults there. So new camera, and I'm going to set up a camera view kind of from from this perspective. And let's see, set active object as camera. Okay, so this is the now the the camera that I want to use and I'm going to pull it back so that it's got a view kind of of the city, city scene, kind of more or less from my view now. I know there's a way that I can set my at, like my active view um, to the camera, but that seems to be <laughs> for whatever reason I can't find it. So we'll just, it's not really what I meant to be covering anyway. All right, so now as this sphere moves to the scene, I can see that there's like this, the sphere passes, uh, past the camera. Um, and so maybe I'm going to set my, my frames to just before. So we're kind of at frame 17, start at frame 17. And right after it passes. So that is frame 43. Nice short animation. All right, so I'd want to set up my camera and my render properties. So um, I want to use this, in this case, I'm going to use the Cycles um, render engine, and I'm going to set up my resolution. Um, default 1980 by 1020. And I'll render out at 50% of that, just for sake of speed, um, and I'm starting on frame 17, finishing on frame 43, and then back in my render settings, I'm actually going to use a denoiser, uh, this open image denoise, and make sure that's uh, checked off, and then that allows me to render out at a frame at 32 samples, which is pretty speedy. All right, so I'm, now I'm going to say. Um, in my rendering, so I think that that's all set up correctly. Um, I'm lighting this scene. Let's just do a kind of a preview of the using cycles. Ah, it's pretty. Oh, there we go. So perfect. So I'm lighting my scene with an HDRI image, um, not HDRI, but a 360 degree panoramic. Um, and I actually don't want to see that, so I'm going to turn that off uh, so that it's invisible to the camera but it's still lighting the scene. There we go. So we, we'll just have kind of a black background here. And uh, then I'll, I'd want to set up my output. So under my, um, under my uh, output properties, I'm going to go in and select a folder where I want all these images to save to. And I'm going to call that um, here. This is a previous uh, folder that I used for tutorials, so I will call this um, render image sequence test. 
and then I always like to say it's stills, so I know, so I can di differentiate between, <laughs> put it in the wrong place, so I can differentiate between kind of like my um, project folders and my still folders. Um, and then it's going to name all of these uh, test one, and then it's going to put the file, um, the frame number after it, I believe. So I'm just going to say OK, accept. And um, then I want to save, I always like to save in either TIFF or PNG. TIFF used to be kind of like the, the file format standard, but because there are uncompressed PNG options now, and because PNG is web capable, I, I have a feeling PNG is going to be a much more ar archivable file format in the long term. So if that's something that you're thinking about, you know, long term, I, th I think that it's a, I, I, I've been, I kind of have switched over from TIFF. Um, and then I set the compression down to zero. So these are going to be huge, like big files, high resolution. Again, you know, if I'm working for a client, I want to, I don't want this to be 50%. And I even might, you know, compress the stills a little bit bigger, knowing that, you know, this is HD. We're already in a, a 4K territory. Just knowing that screens are going to get higher and higher resolution. I like to have the images files that, that I can recompress at various resolutions, get them higher and higher. But for our purposes today, we're going to use 50% because I want this uh, to render quickly. <laughs> so, okay. So that is that. I think I've got everything set up. Just going to do a, a double check. I've got my PNG. It's going to save with a file extension. It's going to save in this folder. It's going to save with this file name. Um, I can say accept. If I don't need um, a 16-bit uh, color depth, probably would be smart, again, for, for archiving, certainly if you have an alpha layer. Um, in this case, we will um, have an alpha layer uh, because this is rendering out to, um, there isn't going to be, you know, color data behind it because I've turned off the environmental image. And then um, starting on frame 17, ending on frame 43, uh, it's 50% of an, uh, an HD kind of file format. I'm using the Cycles Render Engine. Um, I'm using uh, 32 samples and I'm going to be using this open image denoiser option. That all looks good. So we're ready to go and render our stills. So it will render out um, frame 17 through 43 in a set of PNG files in that folder. And I say render and then render animation. And so one of the other reasons why I like um, rendering out in animation is both for kind of archival purposes. It allows me to, you know, have the most flexibility in terms of file formats. If I have the still images, each frame is a still, still image, then I can do whatever I want with it in whatever setting. The other reason is that, um, and this is happening less and less, but um, if you're not sending out to like a render farm and you're rendering on your own computer, which many of us do, uh, frequently you'll might need to stop the render, kind of mid-render, or maybe your computer crashes. If you're rendering out to these still images, then you can pick back up where you left off, no harm, no foul. Um, but if you're rendering out in a movie file format directly out of Blender, and let's say you need to use your computer, it's kind of stalling out, or let's say go. Goodness gracious, hopefully it doesn't happen, but let's say your computer crashes, um, you, you, you've lost all that render time. So still images is a best practices, it's super safe and kind of an industry standard. All right, so the other thing that I want to show you now is what's happening here. So it looks like each um, frame is going to take about one minute, which um, is fantastic. But um, you can see here this kind of noisy pass. Uh, versus um, something that's been denoised already. So there are these little like cubes that are kind of going through the image and going through and denoising. So that is that, that denoiser that I set up. It's using a machine learning algorithm. So I'll just keep it zoomed in here and hopefully it will pass by. There it goes, perfect timing. Um, uh, it's using a machine learning algorithm to, to kind of smooth out any of the, the, the artifacts uh, left by the um, cycles. Um, light calculations. All right, so I'm going to let this uh, chug away and um, I will come back and show you how to stitch all of these images back together for our 30 or 20, like one second animation. That's 
fine. It'll it'll do the trick. So I will uh, see you shortly. Um, and let this kind of let this render out. All right. Okay. So um, it's uh, finished rendering. Very exciting. So uh, I have. <laughs> My sweet little um, images here, uh, frame 17 through 43, and we see the sphere kind of passing through as uh, we move from uh, frame 17 to 43. So uh, now what we need to do, I'm going to go back into my layout mode view, and we're going to stitch these back together using a video sequencer. Um, so I will have both these archived files and now this uh, video sequencer. So I'm going to open up my video sequencer and I don't really need too much real estate here. Um, start on all of the frame settings should be the same um, since we've rendered out from uh, these same frames. We're not in like a new file, although you can, you don't necessarily need to be in the same, uh, the same working document for this process. And then I'm going to hit shift A for add and I'm going to add image sequence. And I'm going to go into the folder I just created, which is, here you go, uh, frame 17 through 40. I'm going to press A to select all. Um, I'm going to start on 17 and end on frame 42. Is that true? That's 43. Let's say 43. No, that does actually work. <laughs> And then um, the, the defaults there are fine and say add image strip. And there we go. So it's ending um, right there. And then uh, what I can do is now uh, change my render settings uh, over here so that I am no longer rendering out to PNG file format. I want to render out to, um, let's see, in this case... Uh, we'll do. We'll use this FFmpeg video co codec, and then let's see, encoding wrapper, and then I want to use QuickTime since I'm on a, a Mac, so I can preview that. And then the H.264 is good, and output quality. We can do it lossless. It's pretty. It's just already really small because we're writing out the. Let's not do lossless. Let's try perceptually lossless. Let's see what, how big that gets. And then doo -doo -doo, no audio. Great. So now I'm going to say under my go back into my rendering tab and say render animation. <laughs> so let's, let's take a few seconds. <laughs> Maybe one second. And it uh, rendered it out to the same uh, same folder. So that's generally what I do for each test. Like I'll have the, the stills and then the movie file. Sometimes I'll mo move the movie files out as well. So I just have the stills, but, and here we go. Ooh, the sphere moves through the scene. Um, it is a one second video. Very exciting. All right. So that is the, um, that is the process for stitching as an image sequence it creating, rendering out image files in, in image sequence, and then using the video sequencer to stitch them back together in Blender. All right, I hope this is useful, and I'll talk to you all soon.